Welcome back everybody to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Today we will be starting up the trial in Case 3. Good morning, Max. Max? Milk. Milk. What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. S stage? Don't worry. There won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nick, Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. W what? You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that, and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no one needs to fly today. Nick? What's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. Ah, but no need to make such a flashy entrance. Let's do things normally around here. We're as normal as it gets in this crazy place. And now the case of one... What? Your honor, get on with it! Oh, sorry. I just realized that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So? Oh, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, your honor. He does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. It just sounds more... friendly. Hmm, I wonder if that is to our advantage. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement, if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix, right? Eh? That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. It did not count. Did you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero. Zilch. Nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a Von Karma to lose at anything. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix, right? I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. <laughs> Me? Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. Her dad is gone, you know. The prosecution is finished. Let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up there, now! So demanding. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Jesus. Don't mention it! It's no trouble at all! I've been looking forward to this! Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir! All right, Detective, you may proceed with your testimony. All right, let's get this thing started. Tonight at a crime, snow has fallen until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. All of the circus performers gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15 p.m. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blood force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. 
I see. He was beaten to death. Here is the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts this into evidence. A blunt object. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Alright. There are no real flaws with this particular testimony. We just need to clear up a few things. Hold it! Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was underground. The snow froze in place and stayed underground until the next day. Hmm, the snow. Let me see. There's got to be more to this. Eh? What's the matter, Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Mr. Gumshu, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? Back to testimony. Dirk ba dirk. Uh huh. Yep. This all seems to be in order. I think we need a little bit more information on this. Hold it! A wooden box. That's right! The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? Well, this may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? What is that, Detective? Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? There was only one little bottle in that huge box? I wonder if that has some sort of special meaning. Eh, maybe we'll find out. Maybe it's just a red herring, who knows? And we could use a little bit more information here, too. HOLD IT! According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal! And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it is something the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, 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 I bet he made it disappear with magic! <laughs> well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're gonna get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're gonna get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Eh, I'm not even off the stand yet! Obvious. But that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy! Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Korma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Wurtman to the stand. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Trillo will show up on the stand as well. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My full name is Triloquist. I'm employed as an opera tenor. Excuse me? The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman Ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation! I said I was a singer! Maybe you don't believe me. Fine! I'll grace you with a song. <clears throat> me, 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 me. World of the law! Exciting and daring! Guilt or innocence! Decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? 
It had a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. Trillo. You know better than to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I just want to punch you in the face on the off chance swelling would help. You know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes in their minds. What's going on here? Order, order, I demand to know who this witness is. No, don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting to- Ah! You won't get any fair trying to figure out this witness. Now let's proceed. Well. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean, clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? And then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You're sure of that? Without a doubt. He had on his silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? That's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Hmm, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the criminal. Why is that? He has absolute proof. A silk hat? This was found as a scene as a crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah! Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was not the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Okay. I guess she's the boss again today. Alright, well, I can say that this isn't the strangest testimony in this series. Wait a second, this just doesn't feel right here. HOLD IT! You saw Max and only Max, right, Trollo? That's right! And that makes him the killer! There was only one person headed that way that night! Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense and makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? Of, of course there is. That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? Ah, uh, well, I don't know. Uh, how about the victim? That. That's the... victim? That's correct. If Trillo was at the entrance to the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Anyone with sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The Ringmaster and Max went together to the Ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant a likely story? If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the Ringmaster's room, why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? I see. It seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. Bullshit. He's right. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now, let's move along with the testimony. Hmm. 
Trillo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina, which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one that got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know anymore! God! We gotta go through all this again. All this bullshit. HOLD IT! Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm, I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, I think it was around... I'd say even after 10.30pm, I think. Practice ended at 10pm, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? Why, well, I, I... I guess that sounds a bit right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big-nosed dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in the weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. What?! Who said we were waiting for someone?! Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can do without your off-handed series. But! This witness! He's cracking under the pressure already! I'm on to something. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Who do you suppose the witness was waiting for out in the cold that night? It's simple. Regina! Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only! He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina! That's like the craziest animation thus far. You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? This comes right back. What the hell? Is this true? No, I am... Um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw, don't you forget it! Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Eh? Alright. There is obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought! That makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the time of the crime! However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise! If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than Max heading to the scene! There is absolutely no proof that the fitness was fighting for the animal tamer. Um... Uh... I guess you got me. Alright, alright, I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Don't volunteer things. Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? What's the matter? You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? But the matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. <laughs> You're the judge! I mean, look at your horrible outfit! Or pain! <laughs> Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to face time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. 